we're not in Kansas anymore. To infinity and beyond! Fish are friends, not food. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Bond. James Bond. Hey, Luke. May the force be with you. All right, well, we're in this series, uh, Summer Blockbusters, on the Ten Commandments, and we're using movies um, each week to sort of engage in that conversation a little bit more. And last week, Pastor Perry uh, spoke about how our mouths and our tongues uh, do not take the name of the Lord in vain, how that's an important piece, and Jaws was the uh, theme. Yeah? And I just could not help but share this meme with you that I saw a while back. It's memorable. And maybe you've seen it before, but in the whole Jaws idea, this is a rare image of a shark stepping on a Lego. How about that? Is that hilarious or what? If you're not laughing, you've never stepped on a Lego. I'm convinced of it because you know what that feels like and you're laughing. That's funny. It's hilarious. All right. So I know that was last week, but I still had to throw it up there. Okay. Um, tonight, today, we are... Uh, We're going to be digging into the third commandment about Sabbath. Um, Keep the Sabbath holy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And Transformers movies uh, are a cool way for us to think about how the Sabbath transforms us. And so um, I promise there's a little Transformer action coming a little bit later in the message. I'm so excited. I'm excited about that. Uh, Would you pray with me, please? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for what you're up to and how you want to transform our lives. You don't just leave us kind of where we're at. Um, You want to bless us and encourage us and help us and speak truth into our lives. And so we pray that you would do that today, right now, right here, um, by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're talking first about work. Uh, Work is hard, huh? But actually, God designed work. In fact, he's a creator He is continually at work in our world, and so it's something that God is all about. He's about work. In fact, Adam and Eve, um, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them purposeful work to do. Um, Do you know what the work was that he gave them to do by chance? Um, He wanted them to take care of the earth. He said, be fruitful and multiply and, um, and be in charge of the earth. He gave them this really important work to do, and, uh, and it was good. It was, his original intention was that it would be good, but after the fall, um, it actually says that now your work, he said to Adam and Eve, now your work is going to be laborious. It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be so easy. It's not going to be so fun. But even in the midst of that consequence of their sin, God gave them something called the Sabbath. And he started it out, right? We hear the creation um, account that, that God worked and he created. And then on the seventh day, he rested. Let's hear that. Um, this is actually the commandment that God gave. And he talks about what he did at creation. Um, so this is from Exodus uh, 20, verse 8 and on. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Well, like anything good, like God intended, we can really mess it up, right? And honestly, I think busyness, even that word, is evidence of the fact that something great can be something that enslaves us. And I'm guessing a lot of us in here have experienced that, where work is a burden, where it's difficult, and yet here's God, who loves to bring grace and freedom to us, even in the midst of difficulty. So, uh, God's people were enslaved in the country of Egypt. They talk about work. They were worked mercilessly. They were worked so hard. And God frees them from slavery. He walks them into freedom. And when he does that, he gives the Ten Commandments, one of which I just read for you. 
He gives them these Ten Commandments to bless them, to help them, to encourage them, to give them life. Sometimes we think about God's law and we, for whatever reason, think it's a negative thing. Oh my goodness. He gave it to us for life, for us to experience freedom, and uh, we tend to turn it into something else. What is Sabbath? What is that? What we just read about. The word Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word sabbat, and it means to cease, desist, and rest. That's what that means. And he says, I want you to take one day and set it aside and make it holy. Set it aside for me. And uh, he even did that out of grace for Adam and Eve. After their laboring, he still says, I want you to be refreshed on the Sabbath. I want you to take that and keep it aside and make it holy. In fact, God makes a covenant with his people, and, and Sabbath is understood as like this agreement and relationship between God and his people. Listen to this. This is later in Exodus. Um, the people of Israel must keep the Sabbath day by observing it from generation to generation. This is a covenant obligation for all time. Generation, that's us, for all, for all time. It's a permanent sign of my covenant with the people of Israel. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he stopped working and was refreshed. It's his covenant with us. He loves it when we spend time with him. Well, in the Old Testament, they took this commandment super, super seriously. In fact, if you broke the ten, this commandment, you could be killed. You could be put to death. It was a death sentence of not honoring the Sabbath if you worked on the Sabbath. And I read something this week, and I think, man, this is really interesting, that we don't have to do that when people break the Sabbath. We don't put them to death. That's not a rule that we keep. Because honestly, we're doing a pretty good job of that already on our own. Our work, our inability to rest, our inability to come before God and hand it all over to him, it's killing us. It's affecting our health. It's affecting our relationships. It's affecting our joy and our hope. We're killing ourselves on our own. We desperately need to rest. Now, I personally am somebody who loves to get things done. I love to get things done. I love a good task list. Anybody else with me on that? Yeah? Yep. Love a task list. Love to cross it off. Um, I'm, I'm guessing at least the people who raised their hand would say, I've actually added things to my task list that I've already got accomplished just so I can cross it off. Anybody else do that? It feels so great, right? I love to finish things. I love to see things through. There's just something about it. That, this is, okay, so as if you don't already know I'm weird. When I was a little kid, I would, um, when it was time to clean my room, what I would do just before cleaning my room is I would purposefully go, kids, you should try this. Yes, I would mess it up. I would like trash it so that I could, um, so that I could see the like transformation after I cleaned it. I know, it's kind of weird. Uh, it's what I would do. I would love to see the completed project, love bringing order out of chaos. This is something that I really appreciate. But in my life, I've seen evidence of the fact that I want to strive for things to the point of unhealth, where I am so driven to check off the next thing and the next thing and the next thing that I neglect uh, the other relationships and I neglect my relationship with God. It's a reality for me. It's something I need to keep in check. It's something I need other people to keep me accountable to. But here's God. He invites us to a day that's set apart every week, that's set aside to worship him, to stop, to break free from the tyranny of the urgent, of the schedules, of the repetitiveness of our lives, to stop and listen and catch up. Have you ever, um, well, I know this happens to you. Uh, you haven't seen somebody in a while, and you run into them somewhere. And all of a sudden, you're like, wow, how are you? It has been forever. What's going on in your life? And so maybe they share with you kind of what's going on with them, and then they say, well, tell me about what's going on with you. Yeah, it really has been a long time. We should definitely get together more often. This happens more than I'd like to count in my, or admit in my life. I wonder if that might not be a little bit like our relationship with God from time to time. 
where we just keep rushing through life and we don't stop and we don't pray, we don't talk to him, we don't read his word, we don't, sometimes we neglect coming to worship. And he says, come on now, let's, let's connect, let's catch up. It's been too long. It's been a long time. This commandment is all about relationship. It's all about the relationship that God desires to have with you. Let me in to your life, he says. That might be something that he wants you to hear today. Let me in. Tell me what's going on. Let's catch up. Well, on this Father's Day, I just need to name a reality that we are in desperate need of a relationship with our Heavenly Father. There's a movie called Click that I want to share a a clip from you with. Um, Adam Sandler plays the um, main character. His name is Michael. And Michael is absolutely consumed by his work. Now, some of you are students in here, and maybe you don't have a full-time job, but listen, we can be consumed by anything, really. And they, they can be good things. It can be sports. It can be school. It can be friends. It can be a relationship. Um, we can be consumed by all kinds of things. This guy is consumed by his work. He really doesn't care about much of anything else. In fact, he gets technology that he can fast-forward through the more... Um, just sort of boring, less exciting aspects of life, or even things that are bothersome. He can fast forward in his life past those things um, to get to what he thinks is most important. And so we're going to pick up uh, in this movie on this clip where he uh, realizes that he has neglected his relationship with his elderly father. And he, um, he realizes this too late. His dad has died. And so he's going to rewind to the last time he saw his dad um, before his dad's death. And, uh, yeah, pretty interesting clip, so check it out. Are you missing out on your relationship with God? God loves you. He adores you. He desires to be in relationship with you, to share his promises and his truth. And we need to hear it. We're desperate to hear the grace and the truth and the peace that comes out of God's mouth as he sees us and he looks on us. Is that what you need to hear today? I love you, son. I love you, daughter. You're mine. Be in relationship with me. Let's talk. Let's spend time together. You're so consumed and so busy and so overwhelmed. Put that aside. Time out. So that you can hear my truth in the midst of the noise. In the midst of the tyranny. I am fully convinced that our lives would look really different if we set aside a day of rest. We're desperate for it. The evidence is obvious. It's in our relationships, in our broken relationships, in our health, in our stress, in our propensity to want to be God, to act like God, to be in charge. I know I'm not the only one who wants to seek for control. Our lives look different. I have a struggle with this commandment. Of all the commandments, this one is probably the one I've read about the most. In fact, if you're interested in some resources that can help you go deeper and dig deeper in this topic. I'd love to share them. Some of bits and pieces I'm, I'm sharing in this sermon today. But I still really struggle. Even though I study it, and even though I'm learning and trying to change this part of my relationship with God, I struggle with it. Now, there's some things that could help me. Um, I could schedule it, which I need to do, put it in my calendar, hold it apart like I schedule everything else in my life. I could ask people to keep me accountable. I could protect it right? To say no, to put some boundaries around it. I could prepare better. By the way, anything um, worth doing is take some preparation. That's something that I could do. But by the way, there's just another list of the things that I could have finished and accomplished, right? The reality is that those are good things, but the Sabbath is grace. Sabbath sets us free. I'm not interested today in just putting another thing before you that you should check off. On the other hand, we should have it be a priority because it's about a relationship with God. And freedom and truth and hope come in the midst of us listening, paying attention to what God's up to. 
God did not free his people from slavery so that we could be enslaved to something else. So if there's something else that's enslaving you, it's time to break those chains. Allow Jesus to break those chains. Ask him to help you figure out how to get those chains broken. And then like every other commandment, like all the others, they're designed to help us be free, remain free, and experience freedom in Christ. Sabbath is a gift of grace that transforms us. So like I promised, here's a little video clip from Transformers. But it's pretty cool because if you know about Transformers at all, they're ordinary vehicles or other kinds of things that turn into, can be transformed into something more powerful, more able um, than before. And I believe Sabbath does that for us. So it's pretty kind of cool to think about how even our time with God in worship and time reading his word and time in prayer or just even pausing in the midst of our crazy schedules and just stopping can allow for us to be transformed, to be changed, to be strengthened, to give us abilities we don't otherwise have to be refreshed. So uh, another reality is we need to be reminded of our value, what God says about us. In the midst of the world and our own minds who say things that just are simply not true, God's word speaks truth. Now there are three elements that I want to talk about real briefly about the Sabbath, key elements. Worship, play, and rest. Worship, for us to come together and to hear God's word professed. Um, Luther talked about this, Martin Luther, in his explanation of the commandment. He said this, we're to fear and love God so that we do not neglect his word and the preaching of it, but regard it as holy and gladly hear and learn it. We're to play. I struggle with this sometimes. I forget to play, just to stop and do things that are fun. Stop and, and play a board game with your family. Do the thing that you wouldn't normally do in everyday life. Stop and enjoy and rest, to be strengthened in our rest, to reflect, to readjust our lives. Uh, listen to this clip from... Uh, Devin Franklin, a uh, Hollywood producer and director, on, with his take on the Sabbath. All right, well, he makes it sound kind of easy, and I guess I really encourage you to take some of that challenge and to put it into action. But here's the deal. Um, no matter what goes on with these commandments that we're talking about this summer, the reality is that if you're honest and I'm honest, I am going to fail at this. It's not like, it's not like if I'm going to fail. It's when I fail. What's the answer? The deal is that Jesus came, and when he came, he came to fulfill the law. The law that we could not keep, Jesus died on the cross in his perfection so that he might fulfill the law in our place. And then his victory over death itself is the ultimate victory because that's what will ultimately transform me in the midst of my sin. I am enslaved to sin. I'm stuck in it. And Jesus died so that I can be free, so that you can be free. Not based on your ability to keep the Ten Commandments, for crying out loud, good luck with that. But instead, because of his grace, because of what he has done for us, we can be truly free. Otherwise, when you talk about the Ten Commandments, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at a few things, let me tell you. I kind of wanted to be God myself. You can see that in evidenced in all kinds of aspects of my life. I think I'd do a better job. Honestly, I think that sometimes. It might be deep down, but it's real for me. I think I should be in charge. I think I know what's best. I don't submit to the one who does know best. When, it talk, when we're talking about his name, I don't revere his name through my life and my actions, whether it's my language or however else that I live. When it comes to putting him first and listening and, pay attention and, and paying attention and, and pressing pause, I don't do that because I think I should control things. So when it comes to Sabbath, those are just the first three commandments. We got more left, friends. <laughs> but the deal is this. Jesus died not so that we would get these things right enough, but because we won't. Because of his grace. Because, because of his mercy. The reality is if you're looking for a list of things to be accomplished, to check them off, to have things finished, Jesus did that. Jesus has done that. It's Jesus' work on the cross, which is our only hope. It's our only promise. Listen to this. This is a great story about Jesus. He goes to his hometown. It's the Sabbath, and he's going to read in worship. All right? And listen to what he reads. He opens the scroll of Isaiah the prophet, and he reads this. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. This is Jesus again. He's reading from the Old Testament scriptures, but he's talking about himself. He, he has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. Are there any captives in this room today? Jesus says, he has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And he rolled up the scroll and dropped the mic. Just kidding. That's basically what happened. <laughs> he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. Oh, listen to this. All the eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently, and then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. That's Jesus. His work on the cross was complete. The task list has been eliminated when it comes to pleasing God. And so in relationship with him, he says, I got this. In fact, to the point where on the cross, he's paying the penalty for our sin, and he cries out, it is finished. Enjoy the Sabbath. It's been one. It is finished. Let's pray. Lord, we just pause right now and recognize that you are God and we are not. And what you've done for us is enough. It's more than enough. We thank you for your work on the cross and for overcoming the power of sin and death in your victorious resurrection. Thank you for offering us relationship with you. Help us to to allow you to walk alongside us. But even when we push you away, like that video clip, even when we push you away, we thank you that you continually speak, pursue us, and, and speak the words, I love you, son, I love you, daughter. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.